guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ilona. I'm an online coach, a personal trainer, a bodybuilder, and I'm also a recovered bulimic. So, this is going to be a slightly different video. Basically, I wanted to, sorry, I've got my phone and some notes here that I'm going to be referring to because the topic we're going to talk about today is actually quite serious. I want to re react to Chantal's uh, seafood boil um mukbang because i believe i haven't seen it and i haven't seen anybody else react to it but from what i believe um she talks about uh omad one meal a day and trying to lose weight on it i don't know there's just an assumption from based on what i've seen on twitter and stuff so what i kind of want to talk about is basically and uh, more of what's been going on on her community tab so over here anything i'll talk about i'll insert and what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through what she's been saying in her community tabs, the way she's been eating as per her YouTube channel, and also some actual science in regards to the recommendations. So this is not the science, this is recommendations uh, that I found online on how you should be eating uh, post-hysterectomy just for uh, recovery and compared it, compared it to what she has been doing. And then I also just want to talk about uh, the implications of being morbidly obese and uh, healing uh, post recovery because let's face it your nutrition is key to how you're feeling and um, being extremely overweight is not gonna is your body's already under a lot of pressure and then if you're gonna put it put it under even more pressure by just eating a lot of shit food you're not really helping yourself um first of all i want to start off by saying that if she claims to be doing omad she's talking bullshit because first of all she i reckon she is what around 400 pounds at five foot one which means that she needs to probably be eating between three and a half to four thousand calories a day just to maintain her weight but even her with her gluttony she is unable to put away four thousand calories in one meal i do not believe it that is an obscene amount of food that even she would struggle with so from the meals that we've seen, they're probably the average between 1,500 to 2,500 calories. So even her, at her size, if she was sick to one meal a day, even if it was bad food, let's disregard the nutrition, let's just talk about just the, the calories. So calories in versus calories out. How you lose body fat, the difference, there needs to be different. So you need to consume less, burn more. It is literally simple science like that. The nutrition is important, obviously, to uh, body functions, mental well-being, etc. But in in theory, you could lose weight on eating, like you could lose body fat eating just McDonald's as long as you are in a calor caloric deficit. How you will feel with it, how your body will function with it, that's a different story. But fat loss is possible that way. Okay, so now we've got that out of the way. Uh, did I actually come to my point? Yeah, so she's been talking bullshit because if she was doing that, even if she did that only for two weeks or a week, which she claims, because uh, oh, when did she have operation about a week ago? If she would have done that for a week, she would have dropped a significant amount of weight. You've got to think that the bigger you are, the easier it is to lose weight. So what I'll do is I'll insert here. This is my my one week progress, and all I've done is I dropped my calories from three thousand to twenty three hundred. I drop my carbohydrates to around 80 grams a day, and that's only post-workout. I eat high fat, just normal protein. And the only thing I've also changed is that I try and do half an hour of high intensity after every workout. I didn't do that after every workout last week, but you can tell the difference for just me. That's me as somebody that is a fitness person that is quite lean. So if I can achieve a difference like this in a week, Imagine somebody like Chantel that claims to only do OMAD, which means that she's probably cutting out around 1,500 to 2,000 calories a day in meals because just clearly she hasn't lost any weight at all in any recent times. If anything, she's probably gained over the time she's been on the YouTube channel. So, right, so that's out of the way. So let's first of all talk about her community post, which I believe she has now deleted, but luckily I managed to grab some screen grabs. So here's the first one, which uh, I don't actually know when she uploaded this because I can't see from, because I think I took the screen grab after she posted it, maybe like a day or so. So I don't know about timelines, but it's irrelevant to timelines. So it says here, 
So I bent over to plug in my charger into the wall and I sat down on my bed and I heard a huge rush of liquid. I looked down and a huge amount of fluid and blood was leaking onto the floor coming from my incision. Uh, like sweaty face, sweaty emoji face. I am heading to the ER with BB. I just wanted to let you know that you all aren't wondering, I just wanted to let you know so that you all aren't wondering where I am. I'm not sure if they will keep me or not. Um, I have not been properly taking care of myself and I feel so bad. So at least she acknowledges that what she's been doing food wise is probably very bad for her. This then was followed up with, uh, well, I'm going to be okay. The incision has not reopened, so no repair to it is necessary at this time. The doctor explained that there are many, uh, that, that there may have been a cavity with fluid and it needed to have come out, but the fluid is not infectious. This can happen sometimes. He was, however, a bit concerned by the redness around my wound and prescribed me bed rest and antibiotics in order to nip an infection in the bud. So guys, just wanted to let you know that I will be away for a bit, properly taking care of myself. Much love. Well, the fact that she's got redness around her wound, that does insinuate that there is an infection. And also a buildup of liquid usually, uh, a buildup of fluid usually also means infection. So, or it basically means that the body is trying to repair. So for example, if I train my legs the next day, if I have very nice lines in my legs, body builders will notice. So if you're very, very lean and you have separation through your legs, you have lines, you can see the muscle definition. If I train my legs and I train them hard, the next day those lines have disappeared. The reason why is because there's water around the muscle because the muscle's trying to recover from all the micro tears. So if you're, if you, for example, twist your ankle, you're going to get a sore ankle because basically there's fluid around it and the fluid is helping the repairing of whatever is going on. So a fluid buildup usually means that there is an infection or there is something within the body that does need repairing. Now, she actually did a post, I believe, this morning. Uh, okay, yeah, it was this morning, so I screen grabbed it on the way back from the gym. Hey guys, um, I have decided to make a second channel. Even if I can only manage to do a weekly vlog for now, I would like my Foodie Beauty channel to be only mukbangs. So she learned a the lesson there then. And will be upgrading my filming equipment soon. My plans for this channel are weekly vlogs, uh, maybe more frequently eventually, and also beauty plus size fashion, talk videos, non-food related, and women's health. That's a contradiction there, isn't it? So you want to talk about women's health, but then you also want to keep eating shit, but whatever. Uh, Foodie Beauty will be mukbangs, ASMR story times, and mysteries, etc. Here is the link to my new channel, blah, 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 blah. So that's a contradiction in itself. So you want to talk about health, yet on your other channel you are eating unhealthy in obscene amounts. Um, there's another thing that I just wanted to point out and that is a uh, response she did. Oh, did I delete it? Yeah. So basically, so she took this. This is a... Um, uh, 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 this is from her Instagram where somebody responded to Tess Holiday, who is like... Uh, one of the, the body positivity advocates for the dollars. Let's be real. Sorry, tan hands. Um, uh, you're going to die and not see him grow up into a man. It's really sad. Probably referring to Tess's child. To which she, uh, bigger, to be good for me, <laughs> to which Food of Beauty had this whole paragraph to say about how you cannot judge somebody's health just by looking at them, uh, basically that she knew somebody that was 165 pounds and had a heart attack. And it's just dumb to sort of basically uh, judge somebody's health based on their, based by looking at them. Which to a degree is true, you cannot not always tell somebody's health, but when you have you ever seen Kat Tess Holiday walk down the catwalk, her joints look like they're about to give way. Look, if you're a little bit overweight, that's not healthy. Uh, that's not a little bit of being a sorry let me rephrase that being a little bit overweight is probably not a problem carrying four extra people on your body is a problem you're putting a strain on your every system of the body so the body is made up of several systems you've got your endocrine system you've got your skeletal system you've got your nerve central nervous system you've got like like your respiratory system your cardiovascular system 
Okay, they're all they all work in unison, right? So the secondary is going to be disruptions in one of them is going to affect the others because they're going to have to, they're going to have to overcompensate. That's just a fact. Now, if you're extremely malnourished, or if you're extremely overweight, they're both at the same point. And the same goes for like bodybuilders and stuff. If you're too muscular, you're putting pressure on your body that it's not meant to be like that is not meant to be handling. So yeah, you can say that like you can't guarantee that somebody's not healthy, but the fact that you can look at Chantal, you can look at Anne Berlin, you can look at Tess Holiday, and you can just see by the way they move, by the way they breathe, by the way that they're always sick, by the way that like they just they the, by the image that they give off online, you can tell that these are unhealthy people. So the World Health Organization actually put out a fact that every year, listen to this, every year. Bearing in mind the state of this world, right? Bearing in mind how many people are poor, and it's only really Western world where people, where, where there is a problem with obesity in general. I'm sure there is some island somewhere where obesity is considered beautiful. It is considered beautiful to some people over here as well, but it's not, it's not that much of an epidemic as what it is over here, right? More people die every year of obesity related problems than people dying of malnourishment and undernutrition as in like starving like the starving children of Africa and stuff like that right so more people die because they're eating too much than people die because they physically cannot get food how fucked up is that isn't isn't that literally shocking so obesity is completely preventable for for the most part give it like a one two percent of people that have some medical problem for the most part most people that are obese or overweight are so because they make unhealthy food choices, unhealthy lifestyle choices. That's a fact. That is a fact. However, a lot of people all over the world are poor, live in areas where there is not enough sustenance, they are incapable of growing uh, crops, etc. People are malnourished because of poverty and they have no choice but to be like this. They don't, they don't choose to be skinny, but a lot of people choose to be fat because it's fucking convenient and they just like, they just lack self-control and discipline. That's what it comes down to. They'd rather have their cake now. They'd rather do this and do that and be like, and expect the whole society to change around them because suddenly the norm is to be the size of two people. That's not normal. It's normal to be a certain size. So yeah, don't be complaining if you can't get into a certain seat or don't complain if you can't fit into certain clothes do you know i struggle with fitting into clothes i could go to a high street i'm super healthy i take care of my body i love my body enough to eat healthy to eat right to make sure i get a balance of micronutrients to make sure that i eat food that nourishes my body i exercise it do you know what i struggle finding clothes there's not that many women that have a size like me i go on a rant and complain that i can't find clothes no because i've put myself in this position I could look like a normal person, I could stop training, and I could eat like shit, and I could fit probably into normal clothes, but you know what, I choose to have abs, I choose to have a big bum, I choose to have big quads, I choose to have a big back, I choose to have big shoulders. What that means is that I'm one size on my waist, and I'm two to three sizes up on, my, on the rest of my body, because guess what, my body is hour shaped, hour glass shaped, not hour shaped, hour glass shaped. That's what happens when you trade. So yeah, I struggle finding clothes. But it's, it's a side effect that I've accepted because I want to look the way that I do. So I can't then be bitching about everybody else and expect the whole society to change around me because I'm the one that's being abnormal. Even though people are trying to normalize obesity, they shouldn't. You, you don't normalize like any addiction. You don't normalize eating disorders. So why should obesity be considered? Like, why should that be normalized? I, I don't get it, like, I really, I really don't, um, you know, I appreciate that it's probably difficult for people, like, I've, I, like I said, I've had eating disorders, um, and, you know, I understand that, like, eating food is nice, and I understand there is guilt associated with it, and I understand there probably is underlying reasons for why you do the things you do, um, I, I totally get that, but at some point you do need to take responsibility for your own life, and become an adult, you can't forever blame your problems on what's ever happened in the past and just treat your body like shit and expect everybody else to just take care of it because that's not how it works 
it's unfortunate, but that's the truth. You know, like at some at some point you're gonna have to adult and realize that what you're doing, your actions have repercussions, even though they might be tr they might be triggered due um, uh, due to past events. But you can't you can't control what's happened in the past. You can't control what's gonna happen in the future. And let's be real, how many obese people do you see that make it to an old age? How many 70 year olds do you see? How many 60 year olds do you see that are morbidly obese? Most of them are lucky to make it to the age of 50, 40 even. I mean, especially people like Anne Boleyn's size, like, that's not to be cruel, but if she makes it to the age of 40, the size that she is, she's fucking lucky. And that's just realistic. So anyway, let me just change my batteries and then we'll go through some of this science stuff. And I'll, I'll, stick, I'll clip in over here the studies that I found um, and uh, talk you through them. Here I am back again, change my batteries. So let's talk Chantal, her nutrition, the way she's been behaving and actually the reality of her size and the effects it will have on her recovery. Um, I will preface this that um, it, I am no expert on any of these sciences. I literally just Googled certain terms. I looked at research-based evidence and I looked at the conclusions. So I didn't read the whole studies of everything. I just looked at the conclusions, which is pretty much relevant. There is some confirmation bias, but I will say there was one study that compared malnourished uh, post-operative recovery to slightly obese. So a BMI of between 20 and 25 and 30, which is like not even that much. Um, and those that are under 18 of BMI, they recovered worse than people that were just slightly obese. So I'll preface that, but we are not talking here about a slightly obese poor person. We're talking about a morbidly obese person, okay? Per BMI, I'm actually obese, but I have abs, I have, I am lean. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that these people were not athletes. Uh, BMI is a bit of a, it's a good tool to use for normal people. It's not applicable to athletes because as an athlete, you will have muscle mass and you will be, you will have a high BMI. But let's be real, Chantal's BMI, I don't actually know what it is, but I, I, work, I calculated, um, when I say I, I mean the internet calculated for me, um, Amber's BMI and her BMI was literally 97. So I'm going to guess Chantal's is probably somewhere around 80. That's shocking. So first of all, there are, so I used from, uh, there's two sources that I used for, that I could find in terms of post hysterectomy nutrition. One of them is uh, Alina Health. And the nutritional guidelines they recommended were smaller portions, half of the grains should be whole, um, have half your plate made of fruits and vegetables, uh, a 60 low fat milk, and lean proteins. Then the next one is UHN, which was some sort of University of Toronto related something. Um, I will insert the, the headers of everything that I'm talking about over here so you can see these are legit studies and legit websites. It's not just some fucking bro writing on a blog. Um, basically, um, Meal should be high in protein because it will help with healing the incisions. Uh, the meals should be high in fiber to prevent constipation, and she should drink plenty of fluid. Now, what she's been doing on the fluid part, we don't know. But let's face it, per these recommendations that I could find, she's not really been adhering to them because all she's been eating is fast food, saturated fats, uh, simple carbohydrates that are. Um, just difficult to process, uh, very low fiber food. She's not really eaten anything that is particularly healthy. So there was a study by the M MDPA and it was called the Impact of Nutrition on Enhanced Recovery After Surgery in Gynecological Oncology. So I don't know, I don't, I'm not sure what oncology is, uh, but gynecological obviously is to do with um, the female reproductive system. So, they're saying that there should be a tailored nutrition plan that should start immediately. Uh, I'm pretty sure a tailored nutrition plan does not involve uh, stuffing your face with KFC and pizza rolls. Now, here we come for some interesting science parts. This is this 
I found actually really shocking. So this was uh, posted in Science Daily and it was performed by, study performed by the University of Alberta, Faculty of Medicine and Dentistry. Okay, listen to this. This is, listen, listen, this is, this is evidence, this is peer reviewed science. This is not just making things up, trying to fit a narrative to suit, this is peer reviewed science, which most of the fact acceptance, that sort of, all of that science is not peer reviewed, it's blogs. Basically, for uh, severely obese people having to go into emergency care, um, into emergency surgery, of those, 40% of them needed to be in, in, in an intensive care unit and out of, uh, out of those, 17% of them died due to complications because of their weight, okay? So just, just put that in perspective. So imagine you have to go in for an emergency surgery, it doesn't specify what it is, you just have to go into an emergency surgery, it could be anything, but because of your weight and the complications and the pressure it puts on the body, 40% of these people have to go into an intensive care unit and out of those 17% died. Um, I don't mean to smile, sorry, like, that is, like, that is a fucked up number, I'm, like, that is shocking, really, really shocking. So then I found another study uh, by the ISRN, obesity, um, and, and the study was called Obesity and Surgical Wound Healing, a Current Review. Sorry, like, I, like, I am reading all of uh, notes that I've uh, summarized from the conclusions again like I'm not a doctor so I'm kind of kind of relaying the information that I found so I do apologize if it comes across as a bit stuttery you know like I like I'm not a doctor I'm, I don't have a medical background um, so anyway what this study found is that basically uh, being obese has uh, negative effects on multiple organ system functions and the process is related to healing so that's makes sense because you know your your organs they regulate a lot of hormones and your hormones regulate moods your whole your hormones also drive just the hormone hormones basically regulate the whole body and the organs make sure that there is significant blood flow that there is uh, the right the, the right type of blood cells flowing to and from wherever the, wherever it's needed it's also related to the central nervous system of the brain which recognizes if there is any wounds that need healing so yeah if one system starts failing it will impact the others and your organs are crucial to the functioning of the body New, numerous studies have shown a correlation between obesity and ab abnormal wound healing hmm. where have we just talked where have we seen this where did we just talk about this Okay, so basically the adipose tissue, which is um, like the healthy fat under your skin, um, it works as an insulator, but if there is an, a, 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 a disruption within the terminal blood vessels within the skin, um, this can lead to necrosis because, you know, the, the, the blood vessels are ruined and the whatever nutritious um whatever i guess it will be white blood cells and whatever um, anti-inflammatory stuff that's being sent through the blood to the particular areas of healing and um, these cannot heal so there is a bigger chance of necrosis which is obviously very bad it basically impairs the metabolic function of adipocytes and um, metabolic dysfunction leads to inflammatory mediators beginning to invade adipose tissue which then leads to uh, the inflammatory process so basically what they're saying is, is that if your metabolism is fucked because of the fact that your whole body is under a lot of pressure anyway because of the fact that you're overweight you are you are putting strain on your heart you are putting a strain on your liver you are putting strain on your kidneys you are putting a strain on uh, your, just your respiratory system, everything, everything. Um, you're putting a strain on your pancreas, so you're likely to have diabetes. Everything is under pressure because of the fact that you are carrying so much 
extra body fat on your body. Mm -hmm. And this basically means that you know you, you are likely to get metabolic damage. If you have metabolic damage, it means that any incisions you have, the, the wounds can't heal properly because mm -hmm. the, the blood vessels are just deteriorated and it can result in necrosis and you know not, not healing properly. So I, I don't feel that this is probably something that has happened. I don't think I don't think that she has necrosis because she's far too ER happy. I mean, in this situation, she would want to eat to the ER, but Chantal is far too ER happy to let anything that is even a minor problem. She would be straight in there. Um, in this situation, she absolutely should have. I just don't see how she can have had such a shock. And then literally two days later, she's posting about doing mukbangs again. You know, like you're, you only have one life. Your health is important. What you eat does affect your mental well-being, does affect your physical well-being. Am I saying eat super clean, eat super whole food, everything all the time? No, but just be mindful that you are recovering and the food that you stick in your mouth, if it's of nutritious value, is only gonna aid your recovery. It's unlikely that she will take any of this on board if she even sees this. Should she, I do hope, like I genuinely hope for your sake that you do start taking care, better care of your body. Um, don't necessarily believe the misinformation that's being put out by the fat acceptance movement because it's a particular agenda they're trying to follow. Am I saying don't ever eat anything bad? No, but just try and actually eat good for the most part and have a odd meal of smaller portions that is bad. You don't put your life at risk for some YouTube coin because all of that is going to be completely irrelevant if you die at a young age or shoot this wound just not heal properly because you can't take care of your body. What you stick in here will directly affect everything else in your body so yeah i just wanted to make this video before i do my reaction i have some internet problems at the moment because i'm changing providers so i'm not sure when this is going to be up i have a beauty and barbells episode that i filmed on saturday and i finished editing this yesterday it's tuesday today um, I've been trying to upload it and it kept failing, but I figure out now it's because I've changed the internet provider, so I need to try and figure out how to set up my new modem and do all that. I'm not the most techie of person, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to, and if not, what I'll do is um, at least edit this video so it's ready to go. I'll probably then upload two videos in a row, a Beauty and Barbells one, this particular one, and then tomorrow morning I will react to the, the seafood boil that she did because I believe I'll probably have a lot to say about that on that note and um, I hope you found this interesting because I actually did and I wanna this is something that I want to start doing because I am truly truly passionate about health and fitness uh, but I'm also a firm believer in balance because I've been on the extreme of food like I've been I have done bodybuilding and the extreme of dieting there and it's not healthy I will tell you mentally physically it's not healthy okay do I, do I enjoy the process? Do I enjoy the journey? Yes. 100% is it healthy? No. I will say that straight away. Anybody that says bodybuilding is healthy, it's a lie. It's not. Like, your every like it fucks up your hormones just as bad as being obese, like being obese does. Like, bodybuilding is not healthy. The pressure you put on your body is not healthy. The starvation is not healthy. You might look great, but you're not healthy, okay? Let's just nip that in the butt straight away. I love bodybuilding, I love being on stage, I love the process, I love challenging myself. It's not healthy, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. At the same time, I was bulimic. I was it for a good 15 years. That wasn't healthy either. It's come to the point where I actually, my reflex of throwing up, that's, I think that's flat, I can't remember what it's called now. Like, it's like, I can actually throw up on command because I've thrown up so much. I've I've got to the point almost where like it started to ruin my teeth, it's ruined my enamel. That's not healthy either. Having to sneak around and just be like that. Eating yourself, gorging yourself, having no self-control. And that's one thing I don't like when they say like they have a binge. As somebody that has a true binge eating disorder, which I guess bulimia is, you don't plan a binge. A binge happens. So you're kind of sitting around and you start eating and then it just becomes uncontrollable. And then you feel guilty afterwards, so you then you try and get rid of it some way. So that's either through excessive cardio, laxatives, throwing up, or a combination of all three. 
Um, but you still kind of look alright. Like I never really got really fat. I just was a little bit chunky, but healthy-ish, look healthy-ish looking. But inside, I was not healthy at all, mentally or physically. At the same time, it needs to be in balance. You need to eat. You need to nourish your body. True self-love is taking care of your body, and that's doing the right thing for your body. That is exercising in moderation. That is eating right. Having something naughty in moderation, having a drink in moderation, anything else that's to excess is not going, it's not loving your body because you're destroying it. And that's just a fact. If you truly loved yourself, it doesn't mean that you can't be happy. It doesn't mean that you can't accept yourself. It just means that if you truly cared about yourself, you would treat your body better. Um, and basically that's... I mean, I could just go on and on and on about this. But yeah, I'm going to stop it here, guys. I know I could talk about this for hours and hours and hours and hours. And I'll bore you to death. I hope you found this interesting. If you do, do let me know in the comments down below. And then I will do a bit more research. Even though it didn't take particularly long. But I kind of do want to start doing that. Because I find it interesting. I think it's important to, rather than just provide commentary on opinions, I think... If you're going to say something, you should back it up with science and facts. Is there going to be a bit of a confirmation bias? Probably that's a natural human thing. Um, but yeah, that's one thing I do want to start doing is maybe just be a bit smarter about my reactions and maybe just do the calorie counts, maybe just talk about the effects of the foods. I don't know yet. Like, I don't know yet. I'm, I'm developing and evolving as I go along with this. Um, so this is a bit of a different video from what I have done. Let me know what you think about it. Um, and uh, hopefully you'll see me tomorrow with the actual reaction. Depending on when I get my internet, depending on when I get this uploaded. Because God knows my internet is slow. Anyway, on that note, I am going to go and make myself some breakfast. Have a good day. Thank you so much for watching. Comment, like, subscribe if you want to. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.